Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen has also arrived in New York on her transit to visit Guatemala and Belize. China has expressed objection to her transit and vowed to retaliate. And to know more about the development, we have right here on board Voice of America's White House correspondent for Chinese branch, Paris Wong, who is currently at the White House. Good, mor uh, good morning, Paris, or even good afternoon to you. Caroline speaking right here. So as we know, President Tsai has already arrived in New York starting her transit with uh, what is the U.S. concern about this transit going to do to the U.S. and China relations? And has the U.S. seen any sign of military threat from China against Taiwan? Hi, Caroline. Um, thank you uh, very much for uh, putting me on the show. So U.S. has been very careful. You see every U.S. official is being very careful using the word transit instead of using the visit uh, because they don't want it to be an official visit. They have been talking about this transit as an official and also a private visit, and also says this is the seventh time. So this is not uncommon uh, for a Taiwanese president to uh, doing his or her transit through the United States. Mm -hmm. And what would worry the United States, and frankly, also the allies and partners in the Indo-Pacific region is how China is going to react to this transit. Uh, we know that last year, after Speaker, uh, former Speaker Pelosi went to visit Taiwan, China launched days of military uh, exercise surrounding Taiwan and create a lot of tension in the region. So today, uh, at the uh, National Security Council's uh, press gago, uh, its coordinator for communication, strat strategic communication, John Kirby was asked about this question. Do we see any signs about Chinese uh, military uh, starting to exercise in the region, uh, reacting to the Tsai Ing-wen's arriving in New York uh, on transit? And his answer was that right now we haven't seen anything tangible yet. Uh, but he also calling the China to not overreact. At the same time, we're seeing that uh, this could put a little you know, stress to the U.S. and China relations, especially it is already uh, kind of uh, tense between the two countries. Mm -hmm. uh, because the last year's closest visit, we see China had cut off high-level communication channels within mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so John Kirby, uh, on the Wednesday's pr uh, press briefing in the White House, had urged China uh, do not use this trend as an excuse to make the tension between the two countries even worse. Now, let's see what John Kirby uh, will say. The People's Republic of China should not use this transit as a pretext to step up any aggressive activity around the Taiwan Strait. The United States and China have differences when it comes to Taiwan, but we have managed those differences for more than 40 years. President Biden and this administration has been keeping the lines of, of communication open uh, with Beijing. We want to see that continue on this issue and other issues across the board, uh, and we'll continue to strive uh, to do that. That is. Meanwhile, um, U.S. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy has confirmed that he will be meeting President Tsai on her return stop at California, and obviously China is against this meeting. So, Paris, what is the White House's reaction on this meeting? Sure. We see that uh, John Kirby that I just mentioned, he has reiterated many times that for Taiwanese president to transit in the United States, also meet with local and state officials, including with meeting with congressional members, is not uncommon. However, we see today uh, during the White House press briefing, the spokesperson, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, having asked this question, said, however, a Taiwan president meeting the Speaker of the House inside of the United States could be the first time, and China certainly would have something to say about it. Um, for this exchange, uh, Jean Pierre's answer was that she cannot speak for Taiwan's president's office or uh, the speaker's office. It will let them speak for themselves. But she, she uh, just reiterated that China, please don't react, overreact on this incident because uh, this is not uncommon for uh, Taiwan's president to transit through the U.S. So you can see that the Biden administration have been trying to uh, like tone down the whole thing, just like China do not overreact the whole thing. And this is a very common thing. This is the seventh time that Tsai Ing-wen had transit through the United States. All right. Now, before her trip, Honduras cut diplomatic tie with Taiwan and is establishing one with China. What does this mean for the U.S. and Honduras relations? 
So uh, doing my exchange with John Kirby the other day, and I did ask him about uh, the U.S. You know, work with the uh, Taiwan to try to keep Honduras, to keep that diplomatic tie. And he didn't give a direct answer. However, he said United States still, even right now, value the bilateral relationship with Honduras. United States continue to work in the, this relationship. And uh, he also pointed out, he said the uh, Honduras made this decision, uh, United States assuming Honduras understands that China has proven itself not to be very reliable partner in this hemisphere or frankly in any other corner of the world. So this is what U.S. and Honduras relationship right now. And one thing interesting that we can see frankly, today we are seeing the United States hosting the summit for the democracy. Honduras was actually invited to speak, uh, but at the same time, we see Taiwan was also uh, in the invited list and on, among the speaker list. So we see that United States, although value both Taiwan and Honduras, but still trying to keep the peace between these two countries.